How to be a friend to a friend who's sick. Well, let's start from, uh, first of all, you're 70 and you feel great. You're not, a, you're not even ashamed to say you're 70. Right. You haven't felt this good, you said, since you were 50. Or that, even 10. <laughs> yeah, explain that. You mean well, 10 I, being the first time you had two numbers? Two numbers. I, I hated my decade birthdays. Um, since my kids are here and my husband, they know perfectly well, I agonized my way through my birthdays. Um, we went for my 39th birthday to Gretchen Cryer's, um, getting my act together and taking it on the road. I was practically weeping because I was about to be 40. Ah, uh, to be 40 again, or anything near it. But each of my decade birthdays had its own angst. It was like, how could I possibly be 50? That's my parents' age, you know. How could I possibly be 60? That's surreal. And then I turned 70, and somehow or other, it all switched. And what used to be a sort of glass half empty became a bottomless jug of pure pleasure, just looking around me and marveling at how wonderful my family was, how beautiful the world was, just so sensitive to all my blessings. And I had what I call my summer of bliss in 2009. And then I, we were up in the country for that summer and I came back to New York, went to the High Holy Day services at my synagogue, confessed all my sins, it's the least you can do and we're only asked to do it once a year as opposed to you guys. Well, yeah, no, we guys go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I went as often as I could. You know, you don't want to take any chances, but go ahead. So, so I, I'm in synagogue and I've spent all day expiating, as it were. And then the next morning I go in for my annual mammogram. And that's when, you, for you who don't know this, have, don't have to endure this. I mean, imagine your penis being pressed in I'm a panini, panini no. pan. Yeah. That hurts so, me just thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, usually you come out and the technician says, uh, you're fine, get dressed. And in September 2009, she said, we found a suspicious mass. Um, and that started me in the land of the sick. Well, the first thing, though, is they come to you. You've been there before, and they say, thank you, good, well, you look mm -hmm. great, bye. Right. They said, your, your doctor's a female. Yes. Uh, the do she said, or the assistant said, the doctor wants to see yes. you? Well, that's got to be a chill. You right? know exactly what's going to happen next, because if the technician hasn't come out to tell you you can get dressed, you're next going to see the radiologist, and mine came out. And I didn't even have to hear her say the words that every woman dreads. Mm -hmm. we, we think we found a suspicious mass. So here I've had... Is that had how they put it? Suspicious mass? Suspicious mass. I'd take cancer rather than that. Yeah. I mean... It's an awful place. Really? It is. Mass? Yeah, oh right, my. it makes it sound... Mm. It does, and you, you're in a vulnerable spot anyway. But you're, and you're wearing the gotchas they put on you, you know, mm. this thing with an open back, and you just feel awful. But, I mean, imagine, I'm in my summer of bliss, and then I get this whammy, and suddenly my world shrinks to the confines of my body, which is what happens to us right. in the land of the sick. Right. We suddenly have to think about our blood counts and our oncotypes and the medicine, and x-rays and treatments and everything. That's when you call Bert, I think, is it? I called Bert. And you, you were alone then or you didn't? No, of course I was alone. I mean, I Because went. you didn't expect anything. And I didn't expect anything at all. Right. So at some point I must have called him because he materialized and then I went. <laughs> <laughs> well, I you honestly, say he raced to the hospital. Yeah, he must have raced because uh, I don't really remember much except I know he was with me as I went from room to room for all of the kind of affirmation um, uh, exams where you go into, you know, you have a sonogram and then you have another sonogram and then you have an MRI and you just keep going until they say it's definitely what we thought it was. Right. So, yeah, what, yeah, go ahead. No, so from that time, um, you know, we're used to thinking in a linear way in this culture where you get sick, you get treated, you get well, but there's a moment when you get diagnosed when you have no idea right. if that linear progress is going to come to pass. 